Hey guys, XG here and I'm coming at you with a brand new video today. I'll be showing a little guide on how to speedrun Avalanche Den, also known as Yeti, and hopefully teach a few tips and tricks on the current meta. It's the fastest but probably the hardest purple dungeon for Silver Frost in my opinion, but hopefully this will make it easier for anyone out there. Without further ado, let's go on to my gear. I just upgraded my weapon to Breeze a few hours before making this video. For those who don't know, it sadly resets gem slots. I've heard it's random, but unfortunately I only have two. My accessories are almost the same for my Mushin 8.3 guide. I still have True Siren necklace and earring, but my ring and bracelet are Awakened Oathbreaker. My solar shields consist of Scorpio 1, 2, and 4, Yeti 3, 5, and 7, and Naryu 6 and 8. As a warlock, you're just pure damage. Having over 50% crit and better crit damage than mine is decent enough. All you can really do is provide soul burn and DPS. Just entrust your team to take care of the CCs and defenses for you. I also highly recommend going with people you know. A recommended team for Yeti speedruns would be an Assassin, Warlock, Horse Master, and either a Tank or a Blade Dancer. Now, let's jump into the dungeon. I loaded slow at the start, so a good mate of mine went ahead and cleared the first ramp. On these ramps, you would usually have your assassins stealth their way up, or you could have someone with multiple iframes get to the top. For the first room, have your blade dancer, if you have one that is, spec for knockdown on the slowing blade. Then you would have your warlock knockdown and the blade dancer would grip him. This is a faster way of getting him down instead of throwing snowballs. For this run though, we didn't have a blade dancer, but since our force master is very well geared, we just burned him down. For the next room, just have your Sin Stealth kill the mini boss. The three ads on the right you could take care of. If your Sin fails, like what happened here, which was pretty funny, I'm not gonna lie, or if you don't have one, drag the boss onto the ramp. There, it is just a one way attack on it. The ads tend to stay down at the bottom. Once complete, just clear the last ramp and on with Suyeti. Here is basically the dungeon itself, and well, where most formats tend to wipe. During the heat phase, which lasts from the beginning and until he reaches around 45%, just do DPS. He does 3 phases of heat, the first one is nearing 80%, the second is nearing 60%, and the final one is nearing 45%. During the heat phases, you have 2 choices in order to avoid being frozen and instantly killed. The first choice is that your team uses their trinkets to fasten their DPS and then either have your Force Master or Blade Dancer apply their stunts after his initial jump, after he applies a frozen debuff which will kill you in 15 seconds. After the stun, he would jump in the air, charging an ice ball, signaling it would slam down. That's when you use your light ring. The second choice is that you have the person that is targeted by the Yeti get grabbed, heated up, and thrown. This will slow down the DPS though, and is also a bit harder since there are times when one or two people can't make it to the heated source. We did this anyways though. 
After your team is heated, have your Force Master or Blade Dancer stun him and he will charge his Ice Belt. Use your iframe when he's about to slam it down. For the cold part, he usually does 3 phases as well. The first phase is around 32%, the second phase is around 15 or 20%, and for the third phase, I honestly don't know the percentage since with this type of party I usually kill him within 2 minutes remaining. Again, there are two ways you can avoid being frozen without being instantly killed. The first choice is the best choice. Your team stops DPSing completely and eat the frost circles. Since this is a speedrun, you usually leave 3 left and iframe when he absorbs the 3 coxes. Our group wanted to stay safe a bit on the first phase. On the second phase, however, that's when we left a few out and trusted our Force Master and our abilities to iframe. Once the second phase is over, your team just focuses on DPS and ignore all the frost circles that's been dropping for the third phase. The second choice is, if you're feeling confident enough in both your team and your iframe skills, you don't need to eat any of the cruxes in any phase and focus on just pure DPS and nothing else. I don't recommend going down this path though, but it's all up to you guys. Excluding the intro and whatnot, this run basically took about 8 minutes. I hope you guys found this little 4 man guide helpful. Leave a like if it did, and comment down below if you have any extra tips for others or any questions. That's it for now. XG out. Peace.